short scope, and I think you guys had what eight, and that you know you had the shots, and they started to fall. Is that was that the key? Yeah, there's no question. I mean, I just said that to our team. Uh, you know, I said we stress turnovers. We've been stressing it. You know, last game we had 12, which was positive for us. To follow that up with eight is just uh, it's just good for our players to know that, you know, they know how to do it. You know what I mean? Sometimes you do have to say as a coach, you can't turn the ball over. You know, there's like there's no we know we can execute better. Better execution leads to fewer turnovers. I thought we did a much better job of that in the last probably 25 minutes of the game. Uh, but then there comes an element of turning the ball over where it's just sort of a, a me thing. I'm not giving it to the other team. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I think, you know, it's just good for our guys to know that we can do that. If we do that, 15 assists, eight turnovers, that means we're playing the way we're capable of playing, you know. And uh, I also thought at the same time, Second half, obviously, probably again, 25 minutes. Our defense was much better in the last 25 minutes of the game. So you combine that at both ends of the court, and and our guys just sort of staying with it and staying with it and staying with it. They, you know, they broke through with some with some big plays. Yeah, and you talk about that. You know, you guys, you would get the lead to, or the deficit to one, then they push yeah, back to yep. six or seven, get it to two, they go back to six or seven. What is, as a competitor and for your guys to be able to do that, to withstand that and still have another push in them, what is that? Yeah. Well, again, I think we throw a word, we know we use the word, uh, you know, it's just been trust, like trust our stuff, trust what we do, trust what we do in practice. And I thought our guys did a really good job of that because in those times, you know, I told them in one time out, you know, we're playing in bad luck. You know, the kid hit it, took a three, we missed a layup. I think they came down and they hit a three from 24 feet that hit three parts of the rim and bounced in, you know, and then, you know, there's other things. Sometimes you got to, you know, learn how to get yourself out of playing with some bad luck going against you. And I, I think our guys just stayed with it. Like you said, I just said to Troy, uh, you know, five times, I think we had five times we might have had a chance to tie it, take the lead. And we didn't. We just stayed with it, and I think, uh, you know, Chris Joyce hitting that big three, you know, we just got it out of our offense. And like I told them, when you execute like that and you make that one, that's one the second one that was all Chris Joyce, you know, just along the baseline that was a huge shot. Well, that's when they go in. You know, when you make the ones that are ours, you know, that us are executing, then when it comes time for your own sort of individual one, you find them going in more too. So he gets a lot of credit for that. Uh, and then I just thought Amika – Akaya was terrific tonight, you know, on both ends of the court, uh, you know, which is really good to see. You know, he's been developing. He played terrific. And uh, it's just a really good win for us. You know, we needed one. I think it's been almost a month, Brent. So yeah, I've been like, okay, uh, now only four games, but almost a month to the day. So I'm just glad uh, we were able to get this. And like I just told him, now we got a new experience. You know, a lot of new experiences since we started. And now we have a new experience of, okay, well, we're going to be the hunted on Monday, on Monday, you know, coming off. We're the ones who won the first one, and we're going to see how we sort of re respond in that situation. First off, you kind of just alluded to it. Uh, Amika, really great game by him today, especially coming off the bench. What do you think he added to this game specifically that made him just, you know, more dominant, especially down low? Well, I think I think it's been a learning process for me, for all of our guys. It's been a learning process. One of the things I just said with all the different things that we have within our offense, we've been trying to, you know, ultimately we want it to be very random and the players are making the own, their own decisions. And I just think you're starting to see a little, you know, they, they have the knowledge now. Now there's a comfort level with it. And they're sort of doing their own, their own things, which is ultimately what we really want. You know, that's what I want from them. Uh, you know, that is the freedom within what we do is, but that comes, at, you got to learn it. Like, what's the right time? Where's the right place? Who am I? You know, how do I take advantage of a situation? Who's guarding me? And uh, I think all of our guys are growing that way, but Meek is definitely, uh, you know, taking a step with that. And, and his defense has been good all year. Uh, and I think when you have a staple like that, you know, when, you, when, you, when he goes in the game and he knows, and we all know he plays good defense back there, he's a huge help. Uh, you know, if you stick with it, your offense will uh, your offense will come along. You know, and what I think was really good for him is he didn't push, he didn't force anything. You know, what I mean, it's all things that are good for him, 
And I think what we'll see as we keep going along, if it's all good for him and who he is, then he'll share the ball and we'll get something good for other guys out of that same those same things. So it's just a credit to him and all of them. Where there's continue to stay with it, continue to try to get better at what we're doing, and it's good to see us be able to win a game where, you know, I don't know, we had to lead for what probably one minute, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, that shows our two wins in league have have come with guys sort of making some big plays in tight games, and it's just good to see those guys doing that because we all know you need that to win close games. Follow-up to that, Coach, is uh, I think it's probably a little underrated the end of the first half when you hit those back-to-back threes to, to close it within single digits. Uh, not only those th- back-to-back threes, but in crunch time, what did you see from your team that made the ultimate difference? Yeah, I, I agree. I, I We came out of, a, I think there was two minutes left, and we said, hey, we got to have two, you know, we got to finish this half the right way. We executed really well. We played really good defense. We go in at half. I mean, I just told the guys at half, uh, you know, you, you guys just have to make yourselves play better. You know, I mean, they you know how to do it. Uh, we, we played better the last probably seven, eight minutes of the first half. Still wasn't great, but we played better. And, uh, you know, I, I think we got some guys that, you know, they're learning that if we stay with what we do, we got some guys who can do some things individually, you know what I mean? But it comes from the we first, and they're learning that. And I think that gives you a lot of confidence. You know, the group gives you a lot of confidence. You know, in, in team sports, the group gives you a lot of confidence. And our guys are learning that more and more. And I think, you know, you, you saw it show up at key times, whether it was Keaton Van Solen making a big defensive play on an out-of-bounds under late, whether it was Amika Akaya doing the same thing. Those are big plays that, you know, they're winning basketball plays. You know, when you're doing them, then, you know, that ball goes in the basket at the other end, and, and it was sort of a complete game that way for us in the second half. Yeah, what what is it about Chris Joyce's mentality that allows him, you know, he had the big shot at Nevada, or one of the big shots in Nevada, he had this one tonight. He had a game winner two years ago at San Jose at the buzzer, I believe. You know, he, he seems to like this this moment. Do you see that? Well, yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and again, I think I think he's learning. Uh, again, it's two games in a row. He's played better. I, you know, I talked to with him a little bit today again, like what are the things that makes him play well? And the more he knows it's not sco- not scoring, it's all the other areas, I think, again – He's got a lot of confidence in himself, and and when you when you approach it that way, you know you're playing well. Then, you know why you're playing well, and when you get an open shot, good players make them. You know what I mean? So, there's a process to that. There, there's there's a learning curve to that. Uh, it's just nice to see him, sort of in both those instances. You say the shots he made were shots that were coming from us doing what we were doing, and you know he he made both. He's made two of those, and again, like I said, when you do that. Then that one that you make on your own, like you made that little spin and turn around 17-footer on the baseline, well, that's all Chris Joyce, but, you know, that meant a lot because of that first one he made. And, uh, you know, hopefully he just keeps learning and getting better. He's, he's got, we got 13 more games. We got a game Monday, you know, game to game. If Chris can play that way every game, you know, then, then he finishes out his college career knowing – hey, I played really well, you know, my last 15 games, of the, you know, and it's not I, – I averaged this much points. No, I played really well. And I know if Chris plays well, he's learning that our team – when Chris plays well, you know, seems like our team plays well. <laughs> so, uh, so you could say the same with AJ. You probably could say – but uh, it's just good for him to see that, learn that, and maybe going forward know it. Know it every game he goes out there. Uh, and then that would be great for him, you know, as an individual to know – that's how I competed my senior year. And then Wyoming started seven of 11 from three and then closed, I think, three of 16. You know, when, when they were seven 11 and you were down 10, were you, did you have a feeling, of, okay, they're not going to keep that up? But was the three of 16 you're doing, was that just shots not falling? What, yeah, what I mean, in, in some respects, I think in the second half, uh, they had some shots not go in where they may have been open. But then I could say in the first half, they had some shots where, you know, Guys who might not be – anybody in college, you know, they all can make a three, but a guy who the scouting report isn't saying is a three-point shooter, they had two of those go in for him. So, in the grand scheme of things, it's probably a little law of averages, but I, I do think our defense got better and then our ability to 
only have eight turnovers, execute on offense, you know, that has a, a wearing effect on the other team. And does it show up in their shooting? I mean, it, it probably does. And, you know, I think we only gave up two offensive rebounds on those missed shots. Uh, you know, the number, the big kid got one and then 24 got one at key time. But I thought we did a decent job of rebounding the ball when we when we needed to. What's what's going on with Abe? Is he okay? You know, it's the same knee. So, I mean, what we're, we're hearing uh, that he is okay from, you know, structurally, but there just seems to be something amiss there, you know. So, I mean, we have to do a little bit more digging there just in terms of him feeling feeling good, I think, up here. You know what I mean? Like when your knee goes, I mean, there's an element of the psychological. Can I really plant? Do I feel like I'm 100% even though, you know, we're saying and he and he knows the trainers working with him and hey you you can do it there is a little psychological but we got to make sure there's we're covering all our bases there I think uh internally to make sure it's we're not missing something but obviously uh he was walking around I just said how you doing he goes fine but he's the kind of kid who always says fine so <laughs> I mean <laughs> well I think we'll hopefully we'll get good news and and we just have to sort of have him work through it a little bit Got you. Follow up to that would be, uh, okay, so interesting thing. But because Clune is empty, I, I can hear you barking out stuff from the bench, okay? When you're yelling at, like, AJ and he to move, is it because they're not moving fast enough within the offense? Or, like, I, I swear, I've heard you, like, at least three games in a row where I feel like maybe it's not the intensity there. W when you say that, what are you looking for them? I mean, I think you use the right word. The hardness, you know, the intensity to how you're moving. You know, every – for us, and it's again for our guys to learn this, you know, when we become really good, it's every cut we make is so hard. Every, like every single movement is important to what we do. You know, there's no, hey, I'm just going to throw it and just go over here. You know, like sometimes you see guys, you see them do it all the time. You know, they pass, they walk away. Hey, your turn. You know, my turn, your turn. Uh, we don't do that, you know. So I think it's learned behavior of every cut, if it's vertical, if it's, to the rim if there's a forcefulness to it over the course of 40 minutes that does something to the other team you know the other team's trying to stop you from moving that way and we got to make sure we do move that way and uh so that's really what it is and I'm not really barking I mean I think I'm I'm just exhorting there's a there's a positive word exhort uh <laughs> versus bark uh so but you can hear it well and and it, right I know uh but it is all encourage, you know. It's encouraging them to come on. We got to move harder. We got to, we got to make ourselves play well. That's probably the way of saying. It. In the end, we have to make ourselves play well, and that's a way to do it. Yeah. Well, the the three was obviously huge, but where did the, the fadeaway turnaround jumper come from? You know, the, <laughs> we were just joking about that in the locker room. I've actually never shot that in a game before, but I I like always just practice that before practice, just kind of messing around. So I, I know I can make it. I just never shot that in a game. So it was kind of cool to come out and see that. I, the guys were calling me Dirk. So <laughs> Dirk Nowitzki for his famous <laughs> fadeaway jumper. So where, where does the courage come from to shoot that at that moment, then, if you've never shot that in a game? Um, you know, I, just a lot of confidence in myself. Um, I had been making shots the whole game. Obviously, there was only like four or five seconds left on the shot clock. And I felt like a lot of guys were – we're guarding the middle of the lane, so I didn't think I had a, a drive or, or, or like a hook shot or anything. Uh, so that was kind of the only thing that I felt that was really open at the time, and I just have a lot of confidence in myself to, to make shots like that. So, Chris, what did you say to the bench after you hit that three? You said something, all right? I know it's there. Would you, can, you, can you repeat it? Is it, is it appropriate? Uh, I don't know if I can repeat it. I just, I just remember uh, maybe a little bit afterwards on the bench, uh, I just said we need to finish here. And then we were focusing on because in Nevada, uh, we didn't finish the game exactly how we wanted when we, even though we won, uh, you know, we, we made a foul on a three and some other stuff. So I was mostly just focused on, hey, that was a big shot, but we need to do what we need to do on defense here. Get a stop. Don't, no dumb fouls or anything so we could fin out, finish out this game and get a win. And do you feel like you guys learned something about, you know, finishing a half or finishing the game? I think the last two minutes of each half was probably one of your best times, especially the first half you hit the three, then AJ hit the three, and then, of course, what you did at the end. Do, do you feel like that was something that you guys have practiced? Was it something like, how did that culminate, do you think? 
You know, with every every drill we do in practice, we talk about we need to start well, we need to finish well. And that's something we've been harping on the whole season. And I think with experience, you know, each of these games that we're playing, uh, the guys are getting more confident in themselves. And we're, we're figuring out each other's strengths and weaknesses a little bit. And I think that kind of helps with, with finishing. And, you know, just because we've been harping on it so much, we, it's almost like we go after it like we need to finish well, especially at, at going into halftime. We, we were down by, I guess, uh, 14. And then we hit a couple, a couple big threes. I think it was, it was really important for us to hit those shots and get those stops on defense. So I think, um, you know, with, with that experience uh, has helped a lot. And, you know, that, that harping from the coaches every day in practice has also helped. How much, how much satisfaction comes from the way this game went? I mean, you had the free throw that could have tied it. And then you guys got down six or seven, then it came back to two and then six or seven that you, that you stuck with it. Because I know as a competitor, it's hard when you come close and don't quite get there. But to, to see the team withstand all of that and win. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing feeling. I'm, I'm really proud of our guys. It's, we would like to not, for it not to be that close and definitely be leading for more of the game. Um, but it's definitely a cool way to win and, you know, see our guys stay with it. As you said, um, there were times where, you know, you thought Wyoming could make a big run there. Uh, you know, I missed my free throw. They make a couple shots, uh, but we stuck with it. We kept fighting, you know, and uh, I thought we re played really well on defense in the second half and that helped us out a lot. We gained some confidence on offense. You know, Amika played amazing. Uh, we were getting the ball in the post, which we talked about before the game. We thought um, that could that could help us out a lot. We could have an advantage there. Um, so I'm really proud of these guys. It's, it's definitely a great win. And uh, your personal highlight reel is getting some good ones. I mean, from the game winner against San Jose, the shot at Nevada. I mean, where do you think these shots, the three and the fadeaway, are going to go on on your personal resume? <laughs> They're definitely up there for sure. I don't even know how to rank them. Um, the San Jose State shot felt pretty good, but this one was pretty far up there too. Amika, congratulations. Uh, you know, did you know coming in, you know, because this wasn't a real tall team that that you might see a much bigger role on the interior and end up doing what you did? Yeah, I just said that um, throughout the course of the game, you just get a feel of how uh, – the team is playing you. Uh, they went small a lot in uh, different situations, so we felt like we had the advantage of slides, so that's how we, we utilized that. And uh, yeah, how much how much enjoyment did you take in this? You know, obviously your role has been up and down this year, but to play a huge role in a, in a victory over a pretty good team, how does this feel for you? Uh, it feels good. Anytime I'm able to help the team in a big way, it's uh, – it's definitely, definitely a good feeling. Um, so, you know, this was a great a, a great win. Uh, we stuck through it throughout the entire game. Uh, no matter if we got down, we stayed poised. And um, I'm just glad we were able to close it out the way we, the way we did. Definitely want to, you know, we didn't want it to be that close for sure. But uh, I'm, I'm glad, you know, that the guys, you know, stuck with it and were poised and we were able to pull it out. Amika, what's the biggest thing you think you guys learned from today in terms of, you know, you're down. You guys hadn't led the whole entire game until the last two minutes in the game. What do you think you guys learned about yourselves? I think the biggest thing that we can we can compete and win with with whoever. Uh, I think once we keep our poise, we can we can be very very uh, dominant and you know do do the best that we can. You know I think. Today really showed that we kept our calm, even when they, in the end, hit hit the big three. Um, you know, we just we just kept our calm, and I just think that's that's something that's so uh, important uh, that we do throughout the course of any game. When uh, when Chris got the ball onto the turnaround, did you know it was going in? Oh, I oh I knew, <laughs> I, I knew I knew that Chris Chris is a very a very special player. He has he has came up so big for us uh, throughout the course of the season, and I'm I'm very. I was very, very happy for him, and uh, like, like he said, you know, we've been in that situation, uh, like in Nevada, but we just wanted to close it out well. But, but man, like that was that was an amazing, amazing clutch shot, and you know, we we definitely let him know that in the locker room for sure. How important is it for a team to identify a guy like Chris so you know when the moment is tight that you've got a guy who's made those shots before? Yeah, I think I think for every team, you know, you definitely have the guy that. 
you know, when when the game is on the line, he's gonna he's gonna step up. He's gonna do his thing, uh, and I think Chris did that in a big in a big way in a big way. So identifying those those players um, and you know that's something that, that we're we're gonna continue to work on identifying who is really their their main guy and doing our best to shut him down um, and things of that nature. So.